Our guest this morning is a well-known performer, recording artist. He has been in show business for nearly 42 years. It's with great pleasure I'd like to introduce the leader of the band Experiments, Mr. Swan Veera Singh in our studios this morning. Good morning and welcome to our program. Good morning, Rick. It's nice to be here in Melbourne once again. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Swan, uh, I got to ask you this question again. Right. Uh, this band, Swan and the Experiments, how, how long have you had this band? Well, I think too long because since 1974, Derek, uh, we've been performing Swan and the Experiments. Uh, if it has been a major success story and I'm so happy to say that we are still doing great in Sri Lanka and around the world. Okay. When was your first gig uh, as Swan and the Experiments? Uh, somewhere, I think it was in April 1974. Right. And then where was the gig? It was at St. Joseph's uh, College Open Air Concert. Uh, concert, yes. Okay. So from that, is it the same uh, same lineup or have you had different musicians no, right been, through No, there have been lots of changes. Yeah. Uh, and even since we came here last, we have... Uh, uh, change like the, we have a new female vocalist called mm. Trishel singing with us. Yeah. So the band keeps evolving, but I kept trying to keep uh, the identity as long as I'm there. I think we go as the experiments. Uh, so there are, there are changes in uh, as in any band. You know, you can't have the same lineup over yeah. the years. Where most bands have the lineup just for a year or two. I've been having them for quite a long time. Yeah. Very happy with I've been, what I've been doing so far. But there are some musicians like uh, I said, Patrick or Neville Davidson. Yeah, he's, he's been, been here for a, for a long, for a long time. time. Yes, and also your drummer. Yeah, still like Yes, yeah. he's been there for a long time. And also my bassist Shobhi Pereira. He's yeah. been with me for all, almost yeah. nineteen years now. Yeah. So there so, are so known faces. How do you manage to keep these boys together? But also, you got a recording studio. Yeah. Well, it's hard work and perseverance, and uh, of course, and the my guys treat it not just uh, as uh, you know something to do for just the pleasure of it. It's, it's a full-time job for them. They treat it like a job. And I expect them to, you know, perform, perform, perform really well, be professional. So we have our regular rehearsals in Sri Lanka. So we don't fool around. We really treat it very seriously as it's our regular job, you know. So I think that has helped a lot. And yeah. I inculcated that into them to, to, you know, that it's important that what we do and as also we, we are like ambassadors for our country. So we, especially when we go out, I'm very, very concerned about their behavior, discipline, punctuality, all that counts, and of course their performance. Okay. So, so I got to ask you, how do you manage to get so I remember when I met you last year, you told me if in December you got 25 jobs. How yes. do you manage to keep up with the work? Well, <laughs> there have been times we have had in, uh, in December, uh, 38 gigs, you know, that we have done a wedding in the morning. <laughs> We have done a sing along in the evening and done a dance also. Yeah. Uh, especially this uh, December season, so many Sri Lankans come to Colombo and we are in this five star circuit. So, December, January, and even November are heavy months. So, but then again, you get months like April, which are not that heavy. And uh, so, we have to make up for that. So, when there is work, what I tell these guys, you've got to work and you know, produce as much as you can and make use of the opportunity. So, uh, most of the boys don't drink. They just have a occasional drink or two. I'm a teetotaler myself. Yeah. I think that helps because after a gig, all I do is go home to and have a king coconut water family. Yeah. And no hangover. I'm ready by ten o'clock in the morning. I'm up and about. You know. Okay. <laughs> Where some musicians sleep the whole day because. Yeah. Uh, I think one reason when you when you drink too much, I think it it tells on you Correct. through the years. Yeah. You know. So I try my best to look as good as you look. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> No, so on talking about recording, uh, it's so funny. I had a uh, I had a look on Spotify. There are some some of your songs on Spotify. Is that going to uh, what is, what's the advantage and the disadvantage? Well, the advantage I can see is that a lot of people will get access to our music. Dis disadvantage is we we won't get anything out of it. Okay. So I think if we can work out some arrangement where at least the artist get some uh, financial remuneration, it's a good thing. Yeah. But otherwise, we get nothing out of it. It can affect us in this way. Like when it comes to our, uh, producing our own music, maybe we do a CD or two that may not sell because everybody will be able to get it on Spotify. So yeah. so that's a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the international audience will have uh, access to our music. Yeah. But this is the disadvantage is we are not going to make anything out of it yeah. unless we can work out some arrangement. Yeah. So on another thing, I, I I admire you as as a as a singer and a leader of a band. 
you're very fussy with your sound. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Did you were you fussy since you started the band with sound? Not really. I think I think Derek, uh, you, uh, you know this that fifty percent of the game is a, the sound. 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 You you if the equipment is, equipment is bad, you're not going to sound good. So I am fussy in that sense. I had to be a perfectionist to see that we get a proper sound system because. However good the band is or you are, you cannot deliver if you don't have a good sound system. So it's part and parcel of the game. So I'm fussy in that sense to make sure that we get a good sound system. So then the band sounds good because I've not noticed at times some very good bands play on bad equipment and they have no uh, actually say in it when they come, people depending if people are higher substantive equipment for them, it's not good for the band, it's not good for the organizer, it's not good for the audience either. Now, talking about recording, can I ask you how many CDs have you produced I over think the years? This, the new CD we have done is the eighth CD that we have produced. Okay. This. So, this is the uh, CD. It's yeah, called, called uh, Nonstop non uh, Dance Party. I think Dance Party. Dance. So, in total, how many CDs have you done? Uh, I think altogether I've done about 11 or 12 CDs. Yes. Of that, eight are in this series of Nonstop. Mm -hmm. Dance music, uh, you know, actually, we are running for, if you're having a party, you can play this for a, oh, it's a 70 minutes of uh, non music, yeah, non-stop, so they can dance to it. Various types of music, you know, from cha-cha to jive, rock and roll, Sri Lankan music like the baila, sing-along songs, everything is there so that it will they will feel as if band is playing live and you can actually dance to it. So that's one of the, uh, the secret of its success has been that, doing it in this non-stop style, non -stop you know. Style, so. okay. Now, coming back. Uh, in your career, now you had a family. How did you juggle? You know, having so many jobs. Then you had your son, and uh, he's he's very good at cricket. Or is yeah, he's a fitness trainer actually. Yeah. He qualified in South Africa. He goes with the national team. He was in Tasmania with the under nineteen team just last month. Right. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, uh, I have a daughter also. She's in New York. So mm -hmm. when they were growing up, it was uh, I had to sort of see that I had time for them. Luckily, I used to work the weekends and and my wife was at home during the nights on the other days and weekend I was, was working and she was with them so we managed to juggle around but it's quite trying to keep you know family going at the same time and your show business takes a lot of your time. I can just it's been challenging I think you have managed so far. Okay. Now during a career you would have uh, accompanied many famous singers. Can you name a few? Uh, I know one person that comes in my mind is Johnny Logan. When he came, we backed him in Colombo. It was a uh, great experience. And then the first time Trini Lopez came, we did the backing for him. So there have been various artists who come through and, you know, we've uh, always done the backing. But uh, actually, actually, backing Johnny Logan was a real experience. Experience. Okay. That that would have been good in it, you know, for a local band because these guys come with charts and all that. And But then most of your band, they are, they are good readers anyway. Yeah, so. some of them can read. But actually, I must say, when uh, when, when, when Matt Mondo came, uh, he brought his arranger and um, uh, the the pianist was the arranger, and we had a few violinists with us, and he, we played at the BMI stage, and he was very happy with what we did because you can't be perfect, but he managed to do most of his songs with us. He was very happy, and we were so thrilled to be backing an artist like Matt Mondo at that time. You oh, know, definitely. So. definitely. No, so so on your band, you're not only performed in Sri Lanka, you've been to every part of the world. Out of all those concerts, which country you think you get uh, you get a bus out of the shows? Definitely Australia. Are I you think serious? This, yeah, <laughs> this is not something I say. I think okay. most bands say, audience response wise, everything, Australia is the place. I'm not saying that because I'm in Melbourne, yeah. but uh, I think uh, there's no question about it because from the response. You, you see, when we perform around the world, you get uh, crowds of 300, 400, but uh, when you come here, Melbourne, sometimes we have done dances, we have got 450, 500, 600 people coming, and you can feel that the, the Sri Lankans out here and the Australians, they really enjoy themselves. That's the difference, because they come, not to criticize, they come to enjoy, and enjoy. You, you feel that when you uh, go to go to them, as I have seen you doing it in Sri Lanka, when you go to them with the microphone and you go right up to them, you can s see the enjoyment in their faces. Yeah. And they are really, I think, they still have a big attraction for our country, nostalgia. So that's why it always works. And I've noticed from all the countries I've been, I would definitely say Australia is number one. Okay. Uh, so on, uh, now you being a leader of a band, 
what sort of a advice you will give the fellow musician to have a good band? I and think um, nothing is better than hard work and perseverance uh, and an element of luck. You've got to be lucky sometimes, but more than anything else, you, in whatever area of work that you do, I mean, let it be in money in something else, if you don't apply yourself properly, there's no way you can, uh, there's no sort of shortcut to success. You've got to go, go through the grind, you know, and uh, it's important to persevere and there are sometimes you know you you get knocked off let's say at talent contest there are many times i know some of friends who are not made it but then at, at uh, you if you just say oh i'm not good enough and keep quiet it's never going to come your way so you've got to persevere you know and sometimes and you haven't achieved uh, you have a goal and work towards it and if you have that sort of dedication finally success will come to you okay also, so on, you, you do a lot of charity in Sri Lanka. Will you be able to share with, with our viewers? Yeah, various foundations. We've raised the Kidney Foundation, the Heart Foundation, uh, Alzheimer's. We work with all these people and then a lot of churches and where we always give them a sizable discount. And, you know, when you say it's for a church or for some for benefit. And I think even the band, we get a lot of job, job satisfaction by... Uh, you know, performing because knowing that we are contributing to good to cause. It. So we have done many charity shows in Sri Lanka and I'm very happy to be able to do that. Okay. Finally, uh, what's your vision as, as a leader of a band and as a, as a singer? Well, uh, I, can, I can say I will I would li love to keep on performing as long as I can, can long as I can, yeah. but it lot a lot depends on uh, the people. As long as they come to see us, as long as they like our music, we should keep doing it and then there will come one day we finally have to say goodbye. So I'm ready for it in time. Okay. So on, it's been very interesting talking to you and uh, let me wish you all the very best. You have been one of my favorite singers in Sri Lanka and keep up the good work. Thank you, Derek. Lovely being here in Melbourne with you and I'd like to thank Channel 31 for having me over here. Thanks, sir. Our sponsors are Prestige Robes and Screens, Transco Cargo, Southern Star Motors, Colombo Money Transfer, Fairfield Lawyers, Jet Travel and Cruise, Forever Skin Naturals, D-Legal, Sahandro.